back inside one more time for Black Means Business. And I'm sitting down with Wayne. What's in a name? What's your Facebook uh, middle name? Uh, Wealthy. Wayne Wealthy Woodard. Wayne Wealthy Woodard of Ambitious Graphic. Another name, Ambitious. Yeah, Okay. definitely. So when you started it out, it was Ambitious Graphics. If you had to give it another acronym now, what would you call it at your level of growth? Uh, I'll still keep it with ambitious because I go. mean, you know, never stop. Still, there you go. Still striving. Okay, you know, Muhammad Ali called himself the greatest before he knew he was the greatest. So there you go. But you absolutely are ambitious. I've had the opportunity to do business with you, design my logo, and I've always been a satisfied customer. So salute. Okay, so is this is ambitious graphics? What you do nine to five, twenty four seven? Are you? Is it your side hustle or what's the deal? Nope, this is it. This is 100% it. Um, I had a clothing line. I still have it. I just don't do it as much because I'm doing uh, so much with Ambitious Graphics. But yeah, this is it. Okay. So at what point did you know that you wouldn't be hitting the time clock? You know, you wouldn't be working for the man. You working for the brother man. Right, right, right. Right, um, right. Actually, it was my clothing line that uh, allowed me to quit my job. I was working at Geico and I had my clothing line Comfort for Suckers. And what happened was like I was matching my income um, at work doing my side hustle, hustling t-shirts uh, for my brand. And when I did that, it was like, uh, okay, it's time to go. And then Ambitious Graphics became a company outside of me doing my own thing with my clothing line. So okay. it was like a second, a birth of a second company from the clothing line. Right. Now, believe it or not, that seems to be the common theme. Everybody left Geico to go do their own thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great company. I won't, I won't say nothing bad about Geico. It's a, it's a great company. I learned a lot. Um, but, you know, just sometimes working with different people, it just, it was the people more than the company right. is what I guess for me, what kind of drew me away from it. Because I actually closed two companies when I was in New York working for Geico to work for Geico. Because I was like, I love the work environment and everything. Um, and that office, when I moved down here, the work environment was completely different to me. Um, so For sure. From New York to Macon? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I already know. So, <laughs> I like, ah, okay. Now it's time to hop back on to, you know, what I'm good at and making my own money. So. Okay. So Macon is not your home? No, no, no. I'm from Buffalo, New York. Okay, so you came to a completely new surrounding, you know, geography, you in a new town, you made your mark. That's it. Tell me how that went down, you know, how did you acclimate yourself? Um, I was strategic about it, actually. Um, I was used to a certain type of individual when I was in New York, um, and that's kind of why I wanted to get away as well. So I was like, all right, let's change scenery and change the type of people that you hang around. So I, like, I naturally, Naturally, you like attract or you attracted to or you want to draw to people that you're comfortable with. So every time I felt the urge of somebody that I was comfortable with speaking with, I'm like, yeah, I need to chill out. Let me go talk to somebody that like, that's where the comfort for suckers came into play at because it was like somebody I'm not comfortable talking to. Those are people I need to talk to, people that I feel like, oh man, why should they talk to me? You know what I mean? Um, and then just building up your own level of confidence so that's kind of where it was doing like what I had to do um, moving here because I didn't know anybody um, I mean I never heard of Macon until I moved to Macon so like it was I don't have any family here or nothing so it was just like yo I had to really make my own so I just was like real strategic about who I talked to and just made sure I was connecting myself with the right people right so what age range was that by then when you came here How um let me see it was about 25. Okay, 25, yeah. so you yeah. foot loose, fancy free. It's not a, a wife and kids and right. stuff. So you pretty much was foot loose and fancy free. There wasn't a wife and kids. So you were kind of detached. You could, you could move around when you ate right. your family was fed. So that's a benefit for people that are listening in. If you decide that you want to step away from your job or change locations, when it's when you're solo, it's easier to move around like that. Definitely. I, I mean, if I was to do it now, I know it would be, it's a lot more logistics. So, I mean, well, it is, but my kid isn't in school or nothing right now. So that's, you know, a little easier. But I know if he was in school, it's just a lot, you know, because he has friends and stuff that he might have built, relationships he might have built that I have to think about. Um, so, yeah, I can see it being a lot harder having a kid than the way I was. Because I would just be like, oh, it, it didn't matter if I, 
did, if it didn't work out, I can go back home with my parents. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, cool. You know, there's a lot of stereotypes, especially in your line of business. Deadlines are key. You know, attention to detail is key when you're printing out graphics. So, what stereotype is it that you had to overcome? Just a transparent moment that you might have started out with, whether it's time management or whether it was quality or whatever it was. Which stereotype did you just, you know, kick down? Um, both really. Um, like when we first started, um, we tried to make sure our time around time was like one of the best, um, and then also having a, a, a really good quality because we were printing out of the house. So we figured, hey, if we print out of the house, we gotta make it look like we're not. You know what I mean? Like a goal was to stay in the house for a year, and then after that, get a location. So um, when we first sat down at the table to form the company, it was like, all right, like this is what we have to do. We have to set ourselves at a professional level before we even get to that, you know, that building. So invoices, letterheads, all that good stuff, like from day one. So that way, we look like a reputable company well before we are um, so that's really you know something that we just constantly uh, drill in is just trying to make sure we keeping a good quality good turnaround time make sure customer service is a1 because unfortunately you know us as brown people we you know our turn I mean our timing is not always reputable and then um, uh, customer service is you know unfortunately it's something that we lack so uh, just trying to make sure, you know, we stay in contact with the customer as much as we possibly can, so. So you went into the game with the foresight of we've got to do better than what people are going to expect from us. And then we at the house, so we can't look like we're at the house. So how do you see a client? If you would go to the client and post Yeah, them? I would just tell people I was out, like, oh, I'm out and about right now. Right, I right. could just go ahead and meet you with your shirts. Like, they're like, check my palm pie. yeah, <laughs> be like, oh, can we come pick up our shirts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I'm actually out right now. Right. I'm in the middle of printing shirts. Like, oh, I'm actually out right now. I could just meet you with your shirts. Like you want to meet somewhere, you know. And I just had like two or three places that was close to the house at the time. There you go. That I just meet them at, and it's just that's how I had to play it mm -hmm. until you know it was like, oh yeah, yes, now you can come pick up your shirt. Right, and it worked out. It worked out. So I hear you saying we. So you saying like you're in business with a partner? Yes, um, myself and uh, Andre Asa. Okay, so you met him once you were here. You had to find yes. someone who had equal talent. Yeah, because like mindset. what happened, we was, uh, it was a group of us that we were going to come together and start like a, a website um, with a bunch of different clothing lines coming together. So um, I had met him from that kind of meeting and um, like things just didn't work out with that. So him, I, him um, another guy and myself, uh, we all had linked up after that just didn't work out. And then we was like, yo, let's go ahead and do this ambitious graphic thing. Okay, so you're kind of tipping on how to work the network. So remember you told us you came here from New York. So how did you make that connection happen? How did y'all link in like that? Did, you know, how do you get together with people with like mindsets? Um, just asking questions, you know, not being afraid to like step outside your comfort zone and talk to somebody. Like if you see somebody, you know, got a, uh, a good influence a network then you just you know hey what's up what's your name what you got going on like I'm not afraid to ask people what they got going on like I see you got a nice car what do you do like what you got going on because obviously if I if I like it and it looks like it's something that I'm, I'm with I want to know who you are who your friends are because like attract like Right, major keys to having real conversations with people. Oh, for sure. Because you can go to a networking event, everybody passing out cars, you get home, you got a whole bunch of cars. Now you're writing on the back of the cars and writing somebody else's number. You know, so you got to really, I guess, like you're saying, hone into that network and let the conversations be for a purpose. Oh, yeah. Sure. Right, yeah. And then I kind of noticed, I don't think you utilize uh, Facebook advertising that much. So is it still like word of mouth within your network or how you're getting your customers? Yes, like... Um... I, I used to do Facebook a whole lot, um, not like pay ads, but um, I was on Facebook a while ago, like when it kind of first, like just kind of for colleges um, thing. So I was able to strategically use Facebook like like a network, like almost like networking outside of social media. So you got to use it the same way, like, hey, how are you doing? Being personal with people. Um, so I was able to get like that 5,000 friend thing a, a, for a while, like I'm constantly like deleting people just to re-add them or add other people um, to my network, um, but 
Yeah, like, I haven't had to pay for ads or nothing like that. I just, I had to actually scale back from Facebook because the business has been, like, pretty good. So I'm trying to not get as much business right now until we can get some help or, you know, update the equipment or whatever case we need to do just to kind of make production a little faster. But, yeah, I mean, social media, is I feel like it's key for us. Um, just not, we didn't have to pay for it, I'll say, yeah. Yeah, and I want to unpack that a little bit when you mentioned we kind of, we're trying to scale back because, you know, so I guess it's a good problem to have when you, you're growing, but you, you got to catch up to your growth. I think that's key because you could try to keep pushing and know you can't deliver, right? So what is that you think now? What's the next step in order to be able to, let's say like, in your, for example, if you wanted to mass produce, and I'm assuming like you might be in a space right now where you can't do some of the things you want to do due to equipment or due to uh, space. How, how are you, you got a plan now about how you're going to tackle that? Yes, 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 we're working on it right now. Um, I love our location. Um, if I didn't love our location so much, I would definitely move um, because the space isn't enough for what we would need to do to go ahead and um, take on more business mm -hmm. to scale. So um, right now, the next step for us would be to find like a, um, like a warehouse kind of facility that we can bring in more uh, equipment um, so that way we can produce a lot more and faster um, looking at bringing in help. Um, one of my sisters is supposed to be moving down um, so she can help out with kind of like the customer service aspect of it. Um, so that gives me a little more time to go ahead and focus on production um, and then figuring out what I need to do to, you know, replace myself on the production end um, and then just hiring sales reps and so on and so forth. Because I mean, eventually we want to franchise this business. So right now we've just been really just trying to figure out the formula with the space that we have because it's a common space that you can find anywhere. So we just want to make sure that it can work um, fluently, you know, just before we go ahead and look at licensing and franchising and all. Right, makes sense. So out of that I got that you're going to, you know, keep the family in there. So keeping the black dollar in the family, you know, in the community. And then the same thing I heard was real estate. You said a warehouse. So hopefully you're thinking about purchasing this warehouse and things like that. Um, right. Um, and you mentioned down location. So I want to talk to you about the downtown experience because I've heard different things about how that can go. You get some black businesses that go downtown and they get right into that whole network, you know, the in crowd down there. They may or may not find out about grants, you know, things like that. And then you got other black businesses go downtown. They're like, no, nah, I'm not even getting into that. I'm just downtown because I'm downtown. What approach are you taking? Are you in kind of in the middle or? I guess I would say so. Like, I fell in love with downtown Macon when I first moved here. Like, and um, I knew that I wanted to have some kind of business or something like that downtown. I didn't know what, because um, I had came from a party promoting background um, before I was working at Geico. I was throwing parties and I had a collection agency also. So I was like... A collection agency? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that was crazy. Um, but yeah, so I just was like, you know what, I wanted to do something downtown. I mean, ideally, because I was comfortable with it, because I, what I was doing the most was party promoting. I was like, well, I'll just throw some parties and then maybe eventually own a club down here or something like that. Never in a million years thought it would be t shirt company. But um, I just, so because I felt that's where I did all my networking was downtown. So. Um, I don't know, man. So like, then when you came downtown, did anybody tell you about the facade grant? Like the money to do your facade outside or for your nah, carpet field? Nobody's I, we, we didn't get any grants, no loans, no nothing. For did you know spot. about them? I didn't know about them. I yeah. Didn't. Yeah, it was just. That I, seemed to be the common theme. You either in or you know or you're not or you don't. You know? Or And I mean, for me, um, which I wouldn't recommend this to nobody like this mindset, but like I'm just like a self-made person. Like I've always been like, yo, make your money and then go ahead and just use your money and don't depend on nobody else's money but so you say you don't recommend that I wouldn't recommend it but it worked for you it worked it was it works but the thing is that like when you know better you do better right so it's like whenever you are using, you just got to be smart about it right and that's what and you just got to be a good steward of money and if you're not then that's when you're probably doing it the way that I did it was probably gonna be the best of that for you because if you don't have it you don't have it but um 
if you can, you know, utilize your credit and grants and loans and stuff like that, it will probably be a lot better because then you have more working capital. So you can do more with growing your business. Um, getting like a loan or, or whatnot uh, would definitely help um, just as long as you have a, a plan and you actually stay true to your plan. I mean, obviously things come, come up, but if you, uh, if you can get some, somebody else's money and use that to grow your business, it's gonna be a lot better because then the money that you have, your own money, then you can you can do a lot more with. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that's why I would definitely like if I had to do it all over again, I'd definitely go a little bit different route, and I probably would have been able to scale a lot faster. Because if you're using your own money, like we was like legit, we came into the business, like we came into our location, like pretty much use all we had to um, to get it um, and then we were working out of there like on a table just trying to make the money to get the next thing like just constantly doing that um, and it was stressful sometimes it was definitely stressful even like when we bought it we got a, a piece of equipment it cost like 20,000 and we used our own money for that and it was like you know, same thing coming out of your bank account dropping that bread and it was like oh now we got zero grinding, 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 like, oh yeah, we got rent still, we got this, something come up with a car or something, you know, you don't have any extra cash because you use it all, like on a big purchase. So if you have some kind of financing or, you know, credit or something like that, then it relieves that stress just a little bit. Um, and, you know, just be more aggressive about paying it back, but at least you have, opposed to putting $20,000 at once, you can put $500 a month until that's paid off and it's a lot less stress on you, so. Okay. Yeah. What would you say is like the best piece of uh, advice that you received that you put, that you implemented and it's worked for you and your success so far? Um, let me see. So many. <laughs> uh, you got a whole lot of yeah, like I'm a, I'm a big reader and, and listen Major. to a lot of stuff. Yeah, I just like, so um, a lot of my success have come from other people, like just listening to other people. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that um, recently that one of my mentors is telling me like has been you know just documenting your process a little bit just so you can understand what you're doing and then that's how you can learn how to fix it because I mean sometimes you're just doing stuff and you don't even know how you're doing it or why you're doing it or, um, and it might not be the best way but if you're not documenting it then you really don't know. Well, I heard you say mentor, so I want to make sure that comes out, um, that you have someone that can help guide you, somewhere who, someone who's already been where you're going mm -hmm. type of thing, so it's key to have mentors, yeah. you know, to learn. Uh, I heard somebody say, get with people who are seven steps ahead of you, you know what I'm saying, where you're already going, not to be intimidated by it, but you know, draw from that knowledge. And I heard you say you like to read, so if you haven't already, I want to suggest um, anything by Dr. Claude Anderson. Man, yeah, yeah, good piece, Powernomics and things like that. It's just. He worked in the government structure, two presidential administrations, and the education system for a long time. And now he's a he's a brother, probably I would say in the 70s, 60s, 70s maybe, but confident, learned, schooled, and then he's just pouring knowledge out, pouring knowledge out. So Dr. Claude Anderson is definitely something you, that, that you would want to read. Um, but I think I'm, I'm hearing from you that you, you had it to do all over again. You might do some things differently. Yeah. Um, but in that, you see the benefit of having done things on your own, self-finance, you know, you don't own anything to anybody right. type of thing. Um, so I was talking to somebody else and I was saying, like, if you took yourself back to the 60s, like some people say right now, what's all going on, you know, in, in our society is they're trying to take us back to the 60s. It's like if we had had a foresight to say, do I want this front seat on their bus? Or do I just want the opportunity to have my own bus line and you not come to, you know, burn it down or whatever the case might be. You don't always have to merge into, just create your own, create your own lane Definitely. and go for what you know. That's it, that's it. It's yeah, all yeah. about, you know, creating your own lane, especially if, you know, you're having a hard time getting in somebody else's. Like, there's no reason to, you know, keep fighting it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just go ahead and create your own. Because, I mean, that kind of is what, caused me to even start doing the ambitious graphic thing in the first place or wanting to print for myself is because it was constant like having issues with different screen print companies just to produce my stuff and it was like man all right like this is getting out of hand like it's too much let me see about doing it myself 
you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, helping other people doing the same thing. Like, I'm sure this is a problem that other people don't have. So let me be that, that gap for the people that are having the same issue that I'm having with starting a line. So that's kind of where our focus is, is just helping people start their own clothing line because I was able to do it successfully, so I have the knowledge to do it. Um, and I connect myself with a lot of people within the industry during that time to help, you know, keep me going, keep me focused on um, staying up to date on different things and fashion and so on and so forth, so. Cool, so just out of curiosity, you said you were at Geico Lift, Geico started your clothing brand. I know they have these like family uh, appreciation days and they do these picnics. Have you done a t-shirt? Have you hired them as a client since you left? I haven't like as a whole company, but I have like team wise. So I've had, you know, a few um, supervisors or whatnot that are, are hire us for just different stuff that they were doing for. Um, so it's been cool and you know, stuff like that. Um, one of our bigger clients that we uh, just picked on was a uh, Camping World. I don't know if you're familiar with Marcus Lamone from The Profit, yeah. he owns that company. Um, so right now we actually working on, uh, we did their making locations though. We are working on probably getting two more of their locations. And if that works out, when that works out, then um, he has 176 locations across the nation. So it'll probably open us up to that. And then he has a slew of other businesses as well. So no telling you know, where that'll go. Well, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Thank We're you. happy to see you growing, you know what I'm saying, and um, wish you continued success. Thank you. Appreciate your time today. Oh, most definitely. And uh, oh, your, your black definitely means business. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. So I want you to complete this sentence for me. Okay. My black means business because... Um, we got to make it happen. Like, point blank period. Like, stop sitting around, waiting for somebody else to do it, be ambitious. Get outside your comfort zone. Like, you gotta make it happen. There you go. This is Carol Roll with Roy sitting down with Wayne, ambitious graphics, and his black means business.